Today we're going to make easy Lumnit flower earrings. Aren't these cute? Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. I saw Marley Bird at the Creativation event in January and grabbed a sample of her new chic sheep yarn and I love it. It inspired me to make a luminant flower based upon the flower bracelet I had made before and turn it into a beautiful pair of earrings. So the Chic Sheep Yarn by Marley Bird is 100% um, merino wool and it's brought to you by people we love at Red Heart. <laughs> so this pattern is written uh, out in longhand on my website but I am shortening down for you and making a video just for you and I want to go over the supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need about four or five yards of the Red Heart Chic Sheep yarn in your favorite color. You're going to need a couple of earring blanks and you're not going to need any extra um, tools for earrings or anything. I'm going to make it simple for you today. You also need your loom hook, a tapestry needle, and um, some scissors. Now you might need a little bit, um, a bit of a threader to get your yarn through here or you can kind of squeeze it on through as I was able to do. All right, let's jump right in. To get your yarn and the pattern, click on the link in the description below. All right, if you have not loom knit before or knit before, this is the perfect project to get you started. I'm going to teach you a couple of terms as we go. We are going to cast on, which is getting that yarn on the loom. But to start, we're going to make a slip knot. The way I make one is twist it around my finger two times and take the back loop over the front loop and then one more time. And then we make that little slip knot. And now I'm going to put it on to our little starter peg or anchor peg and tighten it up. Okay, and this is just going to hold it there. And then that way you don't get that little knot in your work, especially on a small project like this. All right, we're going to wrap around the pegs in an E-wrap fashion. Now what it is doing, we're going to go um, counterclockwise around the loom and I'm going to go clockwise around the actual peg. So I'm going in the, between the first, and the, the first and the last peg to the back, go around that first peg and back, and then it moves me on to my next peg. And so this is two, three, and we're just going to keep going around. And the reason why it's called an E is if it kind of resembles a cursive E. If you've ever written a cursive E, that's what it looks like. So we're going to go around until we get to that first peg, and now we're going to do it one more time. And in this step, it's okay to be tight. It's not always okay to be tight in loom knitting, but in this case it is. This is gonna be a very loopy cast on, so um, it is going to be a little loose, and so we can be tighter if we want to. Just gonna go ahead and lift these loops from the bottom over the top, and what that does is it um, causes it to knit for you. This stitch is actually being made is knit through the back loop or a twisted uh, knit stitch, but it's considered an E-wrap when we're talking about it on the loom. Now that it's already cast on, you can go ahead and get rid of this anchor peg or this anchor yarn. Just pop that right off and let it fall, or you can take it off later. And then push all of your, uh, your stitches down on your pegs. You don't have to push it all the way down to the end. And then we're gonna go around one more time on this pattern, it's a very short one. We're gonna go all the way around our loom and then go between the first and last peg and then pull it back and you can hold it from the inside and it just keeps it in place while you're gonna knit over again. This stitch right here is called the flat knit. It makes it a nice V stitch, just like a traditional knit, except it's much tighter. And in this case, we wanna get it nice and tight. So this is our row one, or round one. And unlike most of the loom knit patterns, in this case, I'm actually gonna have you knit one more peg. So I'm gonna go back to the first peg and we're gonna push that down and do one more flat knit and that's it. We're going to push these all down again and we're going to do what's called the gathered bind off. It's like a drawstring bind off, just like in clothing if you've got a little drawstring. We're going to go around just as we did before and then we're going to go around one and a half times. So when it gets around halfway back here, we're just going to use our scissors and cut that yarn. All right, now you can let it fall 
and we're going to be going back up to where the second peg is. Uh, so this is the first, and we're going to the second peg, put our yarn down below. This is called our working yarn, this yarn that you're working from the ball or the, that cut long tail there. We're going to take our loom hook and go down through this first stitch here, well, on the second peg, and then pull up that working yarn and then I'm going to pull it all the way through okay and now I'm going to go down through the next one and pull it up and down through the next one and pull it up now you can do this with the tapestry needle but I find it much easier to use this uh, loom hook so we're just going all the way around be sure and pause your video as you need I am going a little bit faster here so use those um, pause and rewind tools and uh, also the speed button if you need something slower. There are other tutorials on this channel and you can uh, make those much slower and watch those beginner videos for all these different techniques. Okay, so we are doing a gathered bind off. It just means that you're taking it off the loom. And then we're gonna go down to this first peg because we remember we started on number two and we're going to pull that on through that makes it go through all of the stitches I'm going to go through one more time on peg two and that way we've got this one in here twice and it's definitely going to be closing up in a loop now I like to hold on to the tail here as I take it off I'm going to go ahead and take it off this peg and I'm going to go then the opposite direction this time and as I start taking off a few of these pegs here, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling closed my drawstring. That way when I get to the end, when I pull this together, it won't try and um, go in on itself. I want it to go in around when I pull this drawstring through. I don't wanna trap in the wrong part. So go ahead and pull these off. Here we go, I'm gonna pull that again. See how it's just kind of making it smaller, 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 and by here you can probably just pull it off with your fingers. All right, so we'll take it off the loom completely. And there's that beginning one. And we see how you can just pull on it and it just draws it all together. Okay, now you can say it makes this little flower or rose here. Now this is actually the right side of our project, but I like how it looks when I turn it over and you can see the wrong side and it has it look like a little pearl stitch. So I'm actually gonna make this the front of my little earring. Okay, the way we make the earring is um, I'm going to put a knot in first here to make sure to secure this opening. This is that little slip knot we did. I'm just gonna let that pop out. We want to get our tail here and get a tapestry needle. All right, so now I wanna go through a couple of these stitches and I'm gonna leave a loop or go back through this little loop here and pull in a knot. Okay, and then I wanna make uh, this yarn come up to the top where this other tail is, okay? Now that I have my other tail, I wanna get one of my earring blanks and I'm gonna have it face towards me and I'll slip one of these on. I'm just gonna use the tail here from the beginning. So this beginning strand is up towards the edge and we're just gonna put that through our earring blank. Here we go. And you might need something to help you thread it through. And then we're just gonna tie a knot here. Now, you may wanna not tighten it too tight the first time when you're trying to do this because you, you wanna make sure that your, um, your earring blank is gonna face the right direction for you. So if you grab the wrong way, you may not be able to uh, turn it around. You'll have to do it again. All right, and so I'm gonna tie that knot. Perfect. And then you can go ahead and cut it there if you want to, but what I like to do is um, thread it back down to the center, both of them, and then I'll tie a knot again. And that's really, um, it's not needed for security, it's just more 
uh, that's where I want the um, that's where I want my knot to be and when I uh, when I tie my tails in uh, I don't want it to um, I don't want it to have a little frayed in showing so that's more a matter of preference all right so I'm down to the middle right here and then we're just going to cut it after we knot it. So one and two and then cut our little tails. And that is it. You have your earring. You're going to want to make two of these now. <laughs> Aren't these the cutest? They are just the perfect thing to get you right into spring. I'm telling you, they are squishy soft. They'll feel fantastic against your skin. I can't wait to try these on. And I want you to tell me, what is your favorite color in the Chic Sheep? Be sure and go to the website. Click on the link in the description below and check all the colors out. I can't wait for you to see what Marley has in store for you and all the patterns that they're releasing right now. Oh my gosh, it's so squeezable soft. It's, you know, it's that 100% merino wool feeling fabulous. Be sure and click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you haven't subscribed already and you'll get more videos in your inbox soon. All right, have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye-bye everyone.